So here's the photograph that I'm going to try and colorize today. This uh, is a photograph from um, the uh, family of Bud Heidi. They had a scrapbook of his where he had kept all of the publicity photographs from his career as an announcer at CanBC and other stations in San Francisco. And they loaned me the um, scrapbook and I took a uh, scan of the photographs that were pasted in. So this is exactly as it was in his uh, scrapbook. It has some imperfections, uh, especially if we zoom in a little bit, we can see that there are uh, spots and um, photographic spots. There is a, uh, a mark from a paper clip here. And so the imperfections in the photograph are the first thing that I want to get rid of, these little uh, spots and dots. To start with, I'm going to uh, crop the photograph to get rid of the unnecessary, unnecessary margins. There we have just the pure photograph. And I'm going to change it to grayscale to get rid of uh, color information that's not really needed since it's a black and white photograph. And now I need to start going through the photograph um, from the top to the bottom and what I'm going to do is use uh, the Photoshop clone stamp, which is uh, this little tool here, to uh, erase the uh, spots that I see, especially in the dark parts of the photograph. So what I do is I'm copying a piece of the photograph that looks similar to the spot I want to erase. So I'm copying from there, I'm pasting it there. You can see that as I go through here, I'm copying clean parts of the photograph into and over the top of the spots. I have to go through the entire photograph here and get rid of uh, any of the photographic spots so that before I colorize, it looks completely clean and original, the best quality, clean black and white copy that I can make of a photograph. Here we go, erasing spots little by little you can see all of those disappearing, and shortly we will have a, uh, a completely clean black and white photograph. This process can take uh, from 20 minutes to an hour or longer, depending upon what condition the original photograph is in. So, now I have... Uh, finished the work on uh, preparing the black and white photograph. I got rid of all of the photo spots and imperfections in, in Photoshop. I also lightened a lot of the darkened areas so it's easier to see the detail, the, the writing on the console, the telephone, and some of the other parts of the image. So I have a, uh, a more balanced uh, range of uh, gray tones. And now I'm ready to start colorizing. I'm using a program that's called ACFIS Colorage. It is a uh, uh, French program, actually. And it is one of several tools that uh, colorizing artists use to uh, colorize photographs. A lot of people use Photoshop and apply the colors in layers. I have uh, found this program easy to use, and it's, it's my preference. Certainly not the only option, but uh, one of the ones that we can use. So now I usually start with the uh, skin tones because they're they are the hardest. So we're going to uh, pick up some uh, some skin tones and put them into uh, Bud's face and hand and and other places that we see here on the screen. Now one of the things I learned early on is that you do not guess at what you think the color should be. I actually go and have a whole library of photographs that I use. So I will decide to uh, take the skin tones from the silver-haired man here. Let me put him up. And I'm actually going to copy the uh, uh, skin tone from him. You see the, uh, the option here says pick screen color. There are a lot of different skin tones in uh, in a face. So I'm going to pick them a section at a time. I'm starting with the forehead and uh, I've picked the color which you see down here and I'm now going to start to tell the program that that is the color that 
this part of his forehead should be. Then there's the darker part, so I'll go and pick some uh, darker uh, shadowed forehead areas here and put those in. I'll pick some colors from over here on the side. Uh, this gentleman's a little older than Bud, but uh, the colors should be uh, close enough that it's going to look somewhat human and, and natural. The colors usually around the eyelids are darker and less of a skin tone than, uh, than the other parts of the, uh, of the face. So I'm picking the, uh, now the bridge of the nose. I'll take from, from here and put that in let's see what about the uh, sides of the nose the nostril I find uh, if if I do this process although it's a bit more work and I'm picking up more colors the end result tends to look a lot more natural than just trying to pick a single screen skin color a slightly different uh, color under the eyes and of course we have the whites of the eyes which aren't really white as it turns out you can see here as i pick the uh, the white of the eye it's still got somewhat of a skin tone color so i will drop in the white of the eye just here in the corner and the uh, the pupil now under the nose and of course Bud has a mustache so that's going to change things as well the lip colors um, teeth again you would think that the teeth would be white but they're not really white they're kind of a uh, they look white in the photograph, but when you actually pick the color, it is more of a tan. And here you can see the percentages of uh, red, green, and blue, the three components of the uh, shade that I've picked. So this is the way, little by little, we go assembling the, uh, the colors of uh, Bud's face. So here you can see I have uh, developed a whole library of uh, photographs of men and women and clothing in uh, this folder of colors so that uh, I can pick up skin tones and clothing colors and other, other features. As you can see here, different people have different skin colors. They aren't all the same depending on age and ethnic background and so forth. So I try to uh, pick colors that will match the image that I'm guessing that the person's uh, skin tones are. So let's go back and see how, uh, how Bud looks. Now that I've put all of the color markings in, it, it looks pretty ridiculous at this point, but when I uh, press this button here and I tell it to go and apply the colors, now suddenly we have a nice human looking colored face as you can see different shades are in different parts of the face under the eyes and around the eyes are a bit different color than on the cheeks and of course the lips I stole the hair color from another person because uh, the the gray-haired man I was using obviously had the wrong color so uh, that has allowed me to put that little bit of color into the photograph so now I need to uh, start moving around the photograph little by little. I tend to do the uh, people first. And uh, after I have the uh, people and their clothing accurately set, choosing uh, clothing colors that are from the time frame of the photograph that I'm looking at, because certainly uh, we don't know what color his suit is, but I can look at photographs of men's suits from the 1940s and uh, pick out colors if I see that he has what's probably a gray suit or a brown suit, a blue suit, camel's hair. I can pick the appropriate color from uh, photographs on the screen. And I have, by the way, have had my uh, screen color calibrated so that the colors I see on the screen are accurate and aren't being distorted by the screen calibration. So moving right along, now I've uh, added colors to Bud's clothing. I've got his hand done. 
for his uh, his suit. Again, we don't know what color it is, but I chose this as being an appropriate color for the time. The buttons are a little darker, so I picked up the button color separately. A white shirt, and uh, I had to find a tie color. I chose this one here, but uh, when I used it, the uh, colors were a little too bright, so I had to uh, cut down the saturation on the colors so that it didn't pop out as being too uh, too garish. So now that uh, we have all of his clothing put into place, including his hand and a ring that's on his uh, left hand, let's uh, apply the colors and see what we get. So there we are. Uh, obviously, anybody who's ever seen uh, acoustic tile knows that there was no color at all ever in those tiles. They were, uh, unless they were painted, they were white. So I applied a white border by drawing it around around him closer to the edges of his body so that the uh, tile in the background would be white. So now we have Bud appropriately colorized. I'll, I'll do the, uh, the other gentleman, the engineer, in the control room and then we start on the microphones and the desk furniture, uh, the wall paint, and uh, some of the equipment. So I've done some more work on this uh, image, and uh, uh, as you can see, I have filled in uh, the colors for the engineer, including his uh, gold wrist bracelet. The, I've made the, uh, the desk, the console, the telephone, and the record. Uh, are all black. Um, one of the things that uh, beginning colorists tend to uh, to do is to over colorize images. In reality there aren't as many colors around us as one tends to imagine. Uh, the colors in our world are mostly earth tones and there are not a lot of uh, pastels or bright colors. So we want to get rid of the bright colors where we can and make them look natural. In this case, the color I chose for his hand here in the shadows is too bright, because uh, too much color in it. It was the color of his beard, but because we are now down in a shadow area, the color should be much more muted. So I'm going to uh, take this color and I'm going to modify it by taking out uh, some of the red and adding just a bit more of blue and uh, I'm going to replace that color in the uh, the image here. So now when I do it and take a look at it, it should look uh, a much more realistic. And there it is. So I need to be aware all the time that I don't want to overdo the colors in the image as I put them together. So now let's get to work on the uh, microphone. The uh, microphones that are being used in the KPO studio are the uh, classic uh, 44BX RCA ribbon microphones, and they were colored umber gray, which is actually, I find, a very difficult color to reproduce because sometimes it looks very brown, and other times it looks blue or almost a black or gray, so it's hard to find a decent match for that color. I'm going to use this one here, this KNX uh, ribbon microphone, and there we see the uh, typical colors that that microphone was uh, produced uh, during the uh, 1940s with the uh, the red RCA meatball and the umber gray walls and aluminum and uh, stainless steel. So let's go uh, back and look at his uh, microphone. Notice it's it's interesting he has the usual uh, RCA uh, desk stand but it seems to be placed on a piece of foam rubber. So uh, they provided additional shock mounting in the studio by putting the foam rubber on it. And of course the, uh, the NBC plate uh, identification plate and KPO plate were over the top of the microphone. But here, I'm going to go and pick out the uh, umber gray microphone color and try to uh, apply that. So as I apply this color, the umber gray color around the, uh, 
the image, I can also pick up a white color to fill in the lettering. And then I'm going to uh, pick up my grill color over here, which is uh, a little more neutral. Let's see if I can find a section that's a neutral gray. There we go. And I'm going to apply that to uh, the, the microphone screen. Um, and then we have the uh, stainless steel yoke. So let's find something here, not too light. Kind of a neutral gray. And we're going to apply that to the, uh, to the yoke here. All right, so now I've finished the uh, microphone, filling in the grill colors, the yoke colors, the uh, microphone cable color I got from uh, this photograph, and it's sitting on a uh, piece of foam rubber. What color would an old piece of foam rubber be? Well, I went looking on uh, Google Image and found this piece and robbed the, uh, the color from it and dropped that in here. So... Now, if we drop in these colors, what do we get? Not absolutely perfect, but pretty close, considering that uh, the microphone is in a shadow area. I also uh, applied it to the guest microphone here. So, now we have uh, just a few uh, more details to plug in. I need to do the chair upholstery, the woodwork trim, uh, the turntable, and this, uh, I, what did every radio station at one time had posted on the wall a, uh, an old, old piece of paper with phone numbers to call in the case of emergency, both the uh, station management and uh, fire and police and so forth. And it was usually pretty ratty looking like this one is after hanging on the window for a couple of years. So I'm going to color that a... Uh, a really ratty looking uh, color which I'm gonna have to uh, fi I'm gonna have to find an image on uh, Google image that looks uh, appropriate for it and then that's the color that I will plug in so uh, let me work some more on this and we'll come back okay so I've pretty much uh, picked all of the colors that I want to use in this image and uh, dropped in the details here we have the color of the old paper uh, on the window and uh, the uh, idiot lights on the console, the uh, furniture upholstery, the color of the uh, of the walls, which uh, very faint green was uh, was a typical industrial color in the uh, 1940s, and the uh, turntable as well. For the turntable, I uh, I could recognize that this was a uh, an RCA manufactured turntable. 16-inch uh, transcription turntable, and so I have this image of an RCA turntable, and I picked the colors off of there. So I think I'm uh, just about done, and I can apply the colors and see what we get. So there we are. Looks pretty good to me. Not absolutely perfect, but uh, pretty close to the colors that I was looking for. And so if we uh, compare this to the... Uh, image that we started with. Somehow uh, the color makes it look like uh, it's something that's happening now instead of uh, in the uh, dusty past an old photograph in a photo album. So uh, we've hopefully uh, done a little bit to bring this uh, wonderful old image out of the past and to give it a feeling of uh, the present day or more appropriately what it would have been like if uh, we were standing in this control room looking at Bud do his program in the late 1940s.